Hello dear students. In this lecture we will try to understand how can we identify molecules to be optically active that is chiral or optically inactive that is achiral. In previous video we have discussed conditions under which molecules are optically active. The condition was molecules must possess a chiral center that is a center attached to four different groups or electron densities. In this case, there is no need to go for plane of symmetry or center of symmetry. However, molecules containing more than one chiral centers, it was necessary to check dissymmetry in that molecule, which means the molecule must not contain plane of symmetry or center of symmetry. So let's illustrate it by means of certain examples. Star denotes the chiral center or asymmetric center. We have the first example in which carbon atom is attached to four different groups. One is hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, and then we have a methyl group. Since this center is attached to four different groups, hence it's a chiral center. Therefore, it's optically active. In the second case, that is a carbocation. This carbocationic carbon is attached to three different groups or electron densities and there is no four, fourth electron density in that molecule. So it's optically inactive because there is no chiral center at all. You can see it in another way also that carbocationic carbon is basically sp2 hybridized. So it's a planar molecule because of being planar it does have a plane of symmetry. In that way also it's optically inactive that is achiral. In the third case, we have a carbanion in which carbon carries negative charge and this carbon is attached to four different electron densities. One is hydrogen, next is iodine, third is fluorine and there is the electron density on carbon as minus charge. Since this carbon is attached to four different groups or electron densities we can say hence it's optically active. Now if we will talk about compounds containing more than chiron centers, we are having this example. So in this case, we have two chiral centers and due to the lack of plane of symmetry and center of symmetry, that is it does not have any elements of symmetry, it's optically active. In the second case, there are four chiral centers. Presence of these four chiral centers does not guarantee that the molecule will be optically active because this molecule is having a center that is shown in green which acts as a center of symmetry in that molecule as you can see. Because of the presence of this center of symmetry in that molecule it's optically inactive. So it will not show optical activity or chirality and it will not show optical isomerism. Talking about some cyclic systems, we have these two compounds. Both these compounds contain plane of symmetry. Because of the presence of this plane of symmetry, they are optically inactive. You can remember it in another way that if you look at the ring, one side of electron density of a ring is similar to the another side of electron density, indicating that the carbon is not attached to four different electron densities. So, they do not have a chiral center, so they are optically inactive. In the next case, there is a chiral center because if you look at the ring, one side of electron density is different from the another side of electron density because on one side there are only single bonds, on the another side there is one double bond making the two electron densities of that ring different, hence there is a chiral center. And because of the lack of plane of symmetry, it's optically active. In this case, two methyl groups attached to carbons which are towards, to, towards you and two hydrogens are away from you. Because of this configuration, there is a plane of symmetry in that molecule. Hence, it becomes optically inactive. However, in the next case, the two methyl groups are opposite to each other, one towards you and one away from you and hydrogen is one towards you, another away from you. Because of this configuration, 
there is no plane of symmetry at all, neither there is center of symmetry at all, there are two chiron centers, hence it's optically active. Till now I hope you understand how can you identify molecules to be optically active or optically inactive. Now the point is, once optically active compounds show optical isomerism, one among them will be a dextro and another isomer which is a mirror image normally is basically a levo isomer. So how can you tell the molecule is dextro or levo? For identification of D and L, we have an instrument that's called as polarimeter. So practically we can do it by means of polarimeter, but there is a theoretical way of predicting D and L also provided the molecule contains hydrogen and hydroxyl groups. Molecules containing H and OH groups, once you move from hydrogen to that of hydroxide through a smaller molecular weight group. If it moves clockwise, it's a D isomer and if it moves anticlockwise, it will be L isomer that is the levo isomer. So let's have an example of lactic acid. In this case, we have hydrogen, we have hydroxyl, we have methyl group and we have a carboxyl group also. So this carbon is attached to four different electron densities or four different groups. So it's a chiral center. Obviously, once it's a chiral center, it will be optically active. It will show optical isomerism. Now, methyl group is having lower molecular weight as compared to carboxylic acid. So you have to move from hydrogen to hydroxyl group through a smaller group that is the methyl group. It moves clockwise, so the isomer is D. Obviously, the mirror image of it will be a levo isomer, that is the L isomer. In the case of butane 2 all, once we move from hydrogen to hydroxide through methyl group, because methyl is having lower molecular weight as compared to ethyl, which is shown away from you. So, it moves clockwise, it's a D isomer. Obviously, the mirror image of it is basically a levo isomer. However, molecules lacking H and OH groups will not be predicted D and L. However, we have to switch on to experimentally way of determining D and L by the use of polarimeter. I hope you understand it. This was all about how we can identify molecules to be optically active or optically inactive and how we can predict the molecules to be D and L provided there is hydrogen and hydroxyl groups in that molecule. I hope you understand it. If you are new to my channel, do not hesitate to subscribe it, like it and share it. Thanks for watching DHC.